And let's throw it over to Annette. Okay, I, I don't three. know where we're throwing, but go ahead, Annette. <laughs> I have three questions for Joey, and if that's three okay. Three questions. Go for it. One, my first question is, does Technogranny stand for grandma, Grandmother of Technology? No, actually, uh, it does not. My uh, grandson was, uh, I, I raised my grandson from the time he was in second grade until he was yeah. uh, middle of his second year sophomore in high school. Wow. And he was walking by the computer one day and I was listening to my show when I used to still listen to them. Now I, I just don't have time to do that. But I was listening to the show and my voice, of course, was coming out of the computer and he said, Grandma, what is that? And I, I said, is that your voice? I said, yeah. He said, well, what is that? I said, that's a, uh, me doing a radio show. He said, you mean like a podcast? I said, yeah. He said, wow. And, and is it on iTunes? I said, yes, it is. And he said, wow, Grandma, you are the Techno Granny. <laughs> and that's how I got that name, the Techno Granny, there from my go. grandson. Oh, that's cool. He still, th he still thinks his grandma is one of the coolest people around. I will second that, I but agree. it's our time. I agree, too. Well, thank you. How did you reach over 200,000 listeners, and can you create a DVD? And or a course that will allow people to do some or all of what you've done? Well, okay, first of all, um, I think you have an old bio. Um, my new one uh, is uh, we're actually accumulated over a million internet listeners. Wow. And uh, that's throughout my entire network. That includes the Positively Pittsburgh Live talk cast. That includes the Techno Granny Show. That includes um, Monday Morning Marketeer, Professionals with Impact. And there are four other shows in my network that are syndicated into PPL Mag. They're Pittsburgh syndicated internet radio shows. That's Eye Hypnosis, Planners, Pointers, um, The Empress of Biz, and uh, I'm going to forget somebody. Planners, Pointers, Empress of Biz, Eye Hypnosis, and uh, Gourmet Eater. And they're all syndicated uh, as soon as they, in, which means that as soon as they do their radio show, it gets syndicated onto PositivelyPittsburghLiveMagazine.com, which, by the way, is Pittsburgh's first internet, radio, and TV network. Wow, that's pretty exciting. Okay, my third question is your Star Trek. Uh, you want to talk about Star Trek. That's cool. Did. You know, we're all, some, we're, all a sum, we're all a sum, a sum of those things that we were in the past. And uh, the truth of the matter is um, I was 32 when my second son was born. And uh, my husband, God rest his soul, was just not the kind of guy to hang out with the kids. Okay, he was an excellent provider, but he didn't show up for soccer games, things like that. And um, our, um, my son had a friend, they'd been friends in second grade, and they, and they, uh, they went to an event with a Star Trek, uh, and there was a ship called the Dark Justice, and they were all Klingons, and thought it was so cool, they wanted to be Klingons. Well, naturally, we're not going to send our kids out with a bunch of Star Trekkers, you know. Listen, they were all wonderful people, but there are some older people and some younger people, so we thought we needed to be there, too. So my gal pal and I, two mothers, because we wanted to hang out with our sons, decided to be Klingons. <laughs> oh, that was a good idea. And these two gals who were trying for years to keep wrinkles off their faces put those ridges, wrinkles on their foreheads <laughs> to be Klingons. And my name is a matter of fact, my Klingon name, it's not, I mean, I did a show here for on PCTV 20 years ago. My Klingon name was Bene Gesserat, which if you know anything about the Dune trilogy, that, those are, that, that's the group of witches um, that are in the, uh, the Dune trilogy, mm -hmm. the mother of the Kwisatz Heterok. Oh, so you were on PCTV 21, 20 years ago? About 20 years ago, yes. We, uh, I was a PCTV producer, and we had done a Star Trek convention right here in Pittsburgh. Oh, that's A cool. mini convention. Okay, well, thank you, Joey, and I'm going to return us back to El Tercaso, our host. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and have Brian answer this call before I get into All my right. questions. Now, Brian, before we get into that, did you have any other questions uh, no, for I don't, I can't Joanne at this right time? Now. Could I answer the phone? You could answer the phone. Go ahead and answer the phone. Yeah. Caller, you're on Humanity Matters. Good evening. Uh oh. Hello, oh. everybody. Hey, hi. what's up? Hey, hi. Hi, guys. What's up, Chris Donna? He does more than just tell jokes. He knows a lot of things about the things he talks about. So, and now, because I've been watching since the beginning, and I heard somebody whispering, oh, God, I heard paper rattling, and Chris. Said the birthdays, but he didn't mention them all. Right. But there's it's a my birthday, birthday on Sunday, Donna. Leo. 
Mohegan, Dennis, uh, Annette, Dennis. Dennis should be for Annette because Dennis's birthday is before Annette's. And Mike. Who's Mike? Mike. <laughs> and we'll have to argue to with Steve. her on that so much. Hello to Chucky and hello to the Cavendish family. And what are you guys having for dinner tonight since you ain't going to be at the house? I We're have not no going to have dinner. We're going to a movie. Oh, who's all going to the movie? I'm going. Brian. Oh. So I'm sure you guys will eat dinner somewhere along the line. I we don't might. know. Actually, I'm sure you will. I mean, you can't go to the movie without eating dinner. Well, actually, what's really going on is it's a movie in the park. It's one of the park movies, and we're oh, actually I after. I was thinking we were going to the. No, we're going to a movie in the park, wow. and then actually so we may or may not else. get there. Well, we may or may not get there because after we're done here, this is technical information to the audience. Uh, what happens is after this episode is done in about 20 minutes, we will immediately be having it recorded onto a hard drive. And so therefore, because of that, we may not make it to the movie, but we'll see. We shall see. As far as eating A, I don't know when that's going to happen. When's the movie, where's the movie at? I can't tell you. I might get stalked. Let's <laughs> just say it's somewhere, it's somewhere in the park in the Pittsburgh area. You're so secretive. Uh, well, I'm, I, you know, I when you're famous, it's like it's pretty Joanne. easy. Oh, I'll, I'll give you the um, information. Uh -oh. Go Anybody to the city like parks, go to the city parks oh, website. Really trip coming up on December the first to Willing, West Virginia. Yeah. Say this again. I said, if anybody likes one day trips, oh. there's a trip coming up on December the first to Willing, West Virginia, and it's for one day. Well, we'll talk about that. And Hi, Brian. Happy birthday, honey. Hey, thank you, Donna. You're welcome, sweetie. Now, wait and a minute. I have a question for your guest. You do? Yep. Oh, good. I'm going to shut up then. Final. Yeah, you talk too damn much. You never oh, know oh, when to she... shut up. Hi, Donna. I know she didn't. Oh, yes, I did, and I'll oh. do it again. You talk too much. You never let anybody have a word in edgewise because you go yippity yup and yup and oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You wait, young lady. You wait. She's like, you, you, say, you say about family, you, you talk about family. You didn't even tell nobody about your guest. You didn't give nobody any information about your guest. I did so. so. How is anybody supposed to have any questions for them when you don't tell nobody I, in the family? I did you so tell you about that. But if you're my dad, oh, I'm yeah. from West Virginia. Hey. I hey. did tell you about Joanne last night, and we're not going to argue on live television. I you think the audience calls it? Hey, John, I, I lived in West Virginia night. for a while. So As a matter of fact, I married my first husband in West Virginia. Tell her that one again. I, I lived in Morgantown, West Virginia. I lived in Clarksburg, West Virginia, and I ran away from Masontown, oh Pennsylvania, to the big city, which Pittsburgh was too big, so I ran away to Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh so, so I've lived in West Virginia. It's uh -oh. a nice place. Uh oh. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I always tease Al about West Virginia. West she, Virginia, West you know Virginia. That bad one. Pardon? You know what she's kidding around with the West Virginia thing, right? She doesn't. You don't live in West Virginia? No. You, you know what she's kidding at, right? <laughs> yeah. That they get they get married to their relatives. <laughs> oh, she's being silly. No. She was being silly. That's what she meant. If anybody no, from actually, West Virginia yeah. is watching, they might be offended. We're joking, but... West Virginia. Well, if they don't know how to take a joke, then that's shame on them. Well, how do you actually take a joke? Where, where's the joke? It's invisible, isn't it? So, Donna, what's your question? Yeah, ask her her question. Okay, Joanne, this is all the things that you've been done, because I've I heard what um, all that was saying. Do you get paid for any of that, or do you get paid for all of it? Do I get paid for what I do? Yes. Here, you want to know how I make money, and I will, I will tell you how I make money. Um, my Positively Pittsburgh Live magazine .com is actually uh, an internet radio <coughs> TV network, Excuse and me. it is a, a, an also an online community magazine. It's free to the public to use. They can put their uh, for-profit and non-profit events on the calendar. Anybody can do that. They can mm -hmm. be a member. But if you want to uh, be the news instead of just watching the news, you can buy your own channel. Wow. So business owners buy their own channel. It could be a page, it could be a radio channel, it could be a TV channel, and they pay for it. That's one of the ways that I make money. Also, I have developed a Web 2.0 branding training. Um, when, I, when I lost the limousine business in, uh, in 2004, in the aftermath of Hurricane Ivan, I had to rebrand myself completely. Uh, and I rebranded myself. I was known as a limo lady because I had a limousine business. 
and was pretty successful, small but successful. And uh, so uh, in, in 2007, I started rebranding myself in a year, people began to know me as a techno granny. Nobody taught me that. how to do any of that, Donna. Uh, there were not uh, these guys uh, teaching about blogging and LinkedIn and all that stuff. Um, I had to learn to do it myself. So what I've done is develop a training for small business owners to teach them to create the same kind of platform online that I did myself. And that was one of your questions. Yes. But I put this all on a DVD. That yes. is coming. Uh, I'm wow. starting to do workshops uh, in, in October of this year. And I do have uh, two sets of information products that are on CDs that are about to be put online for sale and will be sell, sold in hard copies also when I go around and speak. Okay, and I want to mention for the record, we are not allowed because, to advertise um, on the, um, this, this version being this public access. However, on our podcast, which I do and you do five of, talk to you, we can. So I do want to put you on a podcast so we can actually bring that out. Oh, because sure, what I'm going to want to do for, my, for the viewers that do tune in to my talk show, Podcast. What I want to do is I want to find out certain price lists that we can't do here. Sure. Because the thing is, I have been doing what I'm doing for about eight years. I have not made a penny. And people keep saying that this show will only be a hobby. I refuse to accept You know, that. the bottom so line is, when, I first, when I, I first started, uh, Albert, I understand. I feel your pain. Yeah. When I first started, I had a friend of mine who is, uh, and I'll give a shout out to her, Marianne Barnes. She owns a real estate agency. She's one Mary of my Ann best Barnes. mentors. She's one of my best mentors, and she would call me for the right. first two years I had these radio shows. She would say, you know, you're making a lot of friends, but are you making any money? Right. And uh, I later hired a, a gal who was a, who was a client of mine uh, as my strategic operating officer. She said, aren't you ready to start advertising and charging people to advertise? No, I'm not ready yet. Well, when I hit, when I hit 200,000 listeners, accumulated listeners, I said, well, now it's time to, to, to advertise. Now, I don't pursue it as much. The bulk of the money that I make is from my consulting business. Uh, but uh, in 2013, you're going to see us heavily, uh, heavily go into actually promoting um, sponsorship on the podcast. All right. Well, you know, Donna. I was trying to do things to get paid. And he's like doing different things, and he's been working his butt off on a computer. Yes. And that's why I was asking, how do you, how did you go about getting paid this way? He can try to get some ideas off of you, and so he can start making money and get where he wants to go. Well, you know, John, I'm always for helping, uh, giving a hand up to people. You know, uh, as someone that's trying to do something, um, and I know that Albert's a little controversial, and people call me Pollyanna because I am not the least bit controversial. No, I, me neither. I, on, on Monday night, I do the good news and only the good news. I tell people on my show on Monday nights, Positively Pittsburgh Live, what about positive don't you get? Uh, there are no First Amendment rights on this show. If you can't say something good about Pittsburgh, I have a mute button and you can't talk. So I'm there not controversial go. at all. <laughs> it's all good news. Um, I try to stay away from controversy. There are enough people out there doing that. God bless Albert because he does, uh, he does uh, manage, uh, and this show in many manners, they do manage to bring some things out to the, to the foreground. I won't say I always agree with him. But that's for another show. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a free country, and we need people. We need that voice of dissension also. Right. And Chris can save his head on the air, if, if, like he said he was going to do. And if I wasn't in a Squirrel Hill Commons in Squirrel Hill, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to watch the show. So I'm glad I'm here so I could see the show, and I'm glad I saw it tonight, because this way I can argue about different things. Well, before you get done, I have to go into a video, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, to let me talk to you later, but do not leave yet. I want to say something. Um, Chris can shave his head if they get into the playoffs, but only if the station agrees to it. And well, as far as Kathy uh, hold on, sheet down or something, hold and on. Kathy can come on the air and shave his head on national live TV. In fact, it's up to them. I don't care if he's willing to sweep it up. Then fine. However, let me just say something about the Squirrel Hill Commons real quickly. Uh-oh, i got to break your rules. Okay. Uh, Squirrel Hill Commons administrators, I do want to say one thing to you. Uh, Donna's stay at the Commons has been unpleasant lately, and they haven't been giving her her menus and her food. Don't worry, I'm not doing anything scary. 
So I want to just say to you, this is the nice, kind, gentler version of Albert. But this is directed to the social worker. At the that's the techno Hill granny's Commons. influence. Yep. <laughs> this is the um, this is the techno granny's influence. I just want to say to the social worker at the Squirrel Hill Commons, and to the administrator, and to the owners and funders, supporters, and local governments that is your funding stream, that if Donna does not start getting treated properly. There will be a future episode of Humanity Matters podcast. There will be an expose on this show in the future without Joanne, because I don't want to hurt her, her, her career at all. But in other words, this is a friendly piece of information. This is not a threat, because I'm not doing that today. I'm telling you that if Donna is not treated better, you will hear about this on the news, the, the Humanity Matters news, the version of my news, but I will also do my best to tell every politician in Pittsburgh, every politician in this state, and every politician in the United States, government, you know, DC, like, like a guy like Mike Doyle, Pat Tooming, and some guy named Bob Casey, if it isn't done right. So what I want you to do, so that none of this has to happen, is I want you to go into Donna Weiss's room within the next 48 hours. Make sure that she has her food and her uh, water. And they reserve dinner. I'm dinner not done, done yet. I'm not done yet. And, and sorry, Donna, but don't interrupt this. And make sure that she's not yelled at for things that she has not done. Because if I hear any more complaints, I promise you that within the next two to three months, I will get every piece of information that I can and I will reveal this to the entire Pittsburgh City Council, the mayor, and you know who else. So let's not go there, because I like to do fun shows and interview famous, wonderful people like Joanne. I want to have fun. I want to do things positive like, like the young lady here. But you know what? If you don't treat my family right, well, the old mean guy, Al, has to come out. And believe me, when mean guy, Al, comes out, Ain't nobody going to want to be You don't want to mess with them, right? So I'm so out of here in eight there. more days. Well, I hope you're out of there in eight more hours the way they've been treating no, you. No, it'll be eight more days. And I tell everybody I'm getting out of jail in eight more days. Yeah, and well. I will pass go, and I will collect my $200. Okay, well, with that, I have to get going, Donna. I know. Good so night, God guys. bless you, Enjoy and I'll dinner. talk to you soon. Thank you, Donna. You're welcome. Talk to you later, Brian. Bye. We'll see Bye, okay. Donna. Now. See you guys. Bye. Okay, good night. See Donna. you, Donna. Now, uh, I have too many questions to ask, and I have a tape roll, and I have literally about 15 minutes. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go with the tape roll. Well, that takes four minutes. Let's skip the tape roll for now, John. For now, we'll skip it. I want to get these questions in. Okay, you kind of already answered the question, but I'm going to officially ask it again because I feel that it does beer you know it's a good idea to kind of reiterate stuff sometimes all right let me try and take that deep breath that you were teaching me i'm working on it how did you learn all that you have learned is it through school college doing the work as a mother what was your path to success and can you teach others your path so essentially what i'm asking there's a variety of questions there but essentially how did Joanne get to where she is? And, and also, there's like separate little questions in here that essentially is saying, what can a person essentially omit and still get successful? In other words, do they need the college degree? And that kind of thing. Oh, so, oh, oh, you don't want to get me started by a college degree. Yes, I do. Uh, I want to get you started. Quite frankly. Let's get Joanne Quinn Smith quite started. Quite frankly. College is, is wonderful, a wonderful institution. I think that <coughs> uh, not everybody is, is designed for college. Right. And unfortunately, um, college is not, does not teach a, 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 a students to hit the ground running. They end up in debt and uh, right. it's difficult to find a job. Um, there is something to be, there's a lot to be said for college and higher education. There's also a lot to be said for work life experience which is very important. i uh, give you an idea. Uh, I, in high school, I went to a small Catholic high school, and I'll give a shout out to uh, Cobb Memorial High School in Masontown, Pennsylvania. It's not there anymore. Graduated with a class of 52. So I had a classic education, 
from what we didn't realize that was a private school at the time. Um, and I had a great uh, forensics teacher.